Hey guys, today we're cooking two pork shoulders on the Traeger Texas style. Okay, so what a lot of people feel Texas style is, is really just good old salt, pepper, and sometimes garlic, better known as SPG. Also, if you could swing it when you're outside of Texas, get yourself some post oak, and better yet, post oak from the central Texas region, the uh, hill country, if you will, kind of little triangle area. It only grows there. If you can't get it, man, do what you can. This morning, I got up about 4 a.m. and I prepared two pork shoulders, better known as pork butts. Now these don't have the bone in them, so they're a little bit uh, loose. I prepared them identical. I used a yellow mustard as a schmear. I scored the fat cap and then coarse ground black pepper and coarse ground kosher salt. And that's it guys, I did go heavy on it and that's all it takes. Now I didn't use any garlic on this. I figured, you know, the pork and I'm gonna use a sauce and the smoke that I get from the Traeger is gonna be just fine. So it's just about 8.30 in the morning, which means, uh, let's see, it's been on there. See, uh, I didn't get it on there until just before five, so two, three, you know, about three and a half hours. I haven't even looked at them yet. Now I am gonna do something different here. On one, I'm going to wrap it in what Chuds calls the boat method. I've never tried this boat method before, but I'm gonna give it a try. Then on the other one, I'm gonna completely wrap it in foil really tight, double wrap, how I normally do it, and, and, and then we're gonna see how it comes out. You're probably wondering why I got this old uh, strainer here. Well, as you know, I'm using pellets, and when you get to the bottom of the bag, um, you start getting into sawdust. So get yourself uh, an old colander strainer, uh, you know, one that your wife uh, is okay with you taking out of the kitchen. And you wanna pour that last bag in there, sift out all the sawdust and you got nice pieces. So as you can see, I got the Smart Tro Wi-Fi or Bluetooth thermometer going there. Got internal temperatures. That's uh, my pork butt, 134, 138, cause I got two. Let's check it out. All right, there we go, guys. Not bad, not bad at all. So that's uh, channel one, and that's channel two on, on the Smart Tro there. All right, as you can see, I'm going through the port in there. Everything looks pretty good. I wanna do this bark test. Now, pork shoulders got a, lot of, got a lot of fat and juice in it anyway, but as you can see here, I got this apple juice, straight up apple juice, and now that I know the pork, the, now that I know the bark is set up, I'm going to go ahead and spray it a little bit. Now, I've only used this bottle for food, okay? All right, guys, so as you can see, that bark is setting up nicely. That coarse ground black pepper with the coarse salt it's gonna do a really good job forming that nice dark bark that I wanna get. And a little secret here, it's probably not a secret if you're from Texas, but keeping that meat moist with a little bit of a spritz once that bark is set up is gonna help that smoke stick to your meat. It's gonna promote that nice dark bark that everyone loves so much. Okay guys, you know what I really like about pulled pork? It gives me a chance to use a type of barbecue sauce that I really like, and that's something with a tang, you know, a tang that you get from vinegar. It's not that old drink uh, the astronauts use, guys. Uh, forget about that. So it's really simple. Now, you can use any kind of method you want. This is mine. Just get yourself a plastic container. Get a little bit of brown sugar. Oh, about that much. That's gonna help knock down some of the spices that you're gonna see me put in there. And I get yourself a hot sauce. Hey, I like tapatillo. So let's put, uh, oh, about that much, maybe a little bit more. That's what the sugar is for, guys. It's gonna kind of help settle this out. Okay, then get yourself some Worcestershire sauce. Hey, if you got some soy sauce, that'll do fine. Take out that little restrictor thing. Eh, about that much, okay? I like Uncle Steve's shake. Okay, you can use salt and pepper like Chuds did, or you can go with something that's a little bit more sophisticated. So I got the spicier from Uncle Steve's shake. By the way, I'm giving some of this away at our 4,000 subscriber giveaway extravaganza. Okay, I'm gonna put about that much. All right, to keep that theme going, some little uh, smoked pepper flakes, eh, about that much. And here's 
where you get that tang. I'm gonna use about half and half apple cider vinegar and white distilled. So I'm gonna go about halfway and then go all the way to the rest of the way with that. Oop. And there you go, guys. I love this on pulled pork. Anything tangy, vinegar-based, uh, it's even good on brisket. You know, that's just my preference. Um, give it a shot. Now you guys can use whatever ingredients you want. Uh, taste a little small batch and uh, you know, kind of messy. Make sure you got the lid on these cheap Cosmos cups really tight. Oh, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Look at that. Look at that bark. Isn't that beautiful? Guys, you can only get bark like this when you use the right mixture of rubs and uh, salt and pepper. Again, coarse ground salt and pepper is all it took. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this here. Again, the, the one's going to be the boat method and the other's going to be completely wrapped. I'm going to show you the boat method right now. So, guys, this is all, this is all I'm going to do. I'm just going to wrap it up. A little boat. Here, guys. Notice how I had a double, double wrapped. Okay. Now, that's going to do a couple things. That's going to continue to let this beautiful bark get even better, and also those juices and the fat down below will kind of help cook it from the bottom and keep it juicy from underneath and hopefully soak on up. So. I'm going to get the other one completely wrapped, then put them back on the smoker since it's doing so good. Now, if you were fully wrapping this, you could put it in the oven. BTU is BTU, right? But I want that smoke as, as little as I'm getting with the Traeger uh, to continue to work on this. All right, guys, like I mentioned, there's the boat, and there's one fully wrapped. I didn't add anything to it at all, uh, and they're still exactly identical. Um, the fat cap was definitely sticking to the grates a little bit on both of them. You know, I kind of scraped them off and actually got a little piece here. I think I'm going to enjoy this a little bit later. Okay, so I didn't uh, show you, but the temperature was right at about 165, almost 170 or so. Um, I'm, I'm going to go for probe tender right around 200. Mm, guys, I don't know if, I, if you saw that there. This is so good. Mm. Mm. It's a little hot. Nice and tasty, guys. You could probably eat it right now. Uh, what doesn't pull apart, you can probably cut up with some nice pork steaks. But uh, I'm going to let it go further because I'm doing pulled pork and I want it to fall apart, guys. Get my old uh, handy Thermo Pro here. It's not very tender, not the way I want it. Let's see, what's the temperature? About 181, 183, 184, 178 there. Needs to go up about another 30 degrees or so, and uh, it's not tender enough yet, so. Now, right here, as you can see by the color, this was the one that I uh, finished off completely wrapped. And this is the one. I boat it up. All right. So right off the bat, you're going to see the uh, bark looks really good. Now, this is a piece that got stuck to the grates on the Traeger. Get a peek at the fully wrapped piece. Oh, man. Woo, sorry about that steam. This one looks uh, smaller because it is. Um, this one, this side, you know, it, was, it came in a package of two, and this this one was a little bit larger. And I'll show you that smoke. Look at that, guys. It definitely uh, got the smoke, guys. You can see that right there. Look at all that smoke right there. Now I'm going to take this one. This is the one I finished with. fully wrapped. Alright, this one right here was the one that I completely wrapped once the bark set up. Still steaming a little bit. This is the one that had the boat treatment. 
All right. Remember this? Okay. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of solids in this. Yeah, it's pretty wet, but that's what vinegar-based barbecue sauces sometimes are like. Kind of give it a sh shake. I'm just going to give it a tiny little dab. There we go. Mix it in. Guys, that's delicious. Mm. Now for the wrap. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, my personal opinion right now. I'm going to go back to completely wrapping up the pork butt and let it finish that way. It just seems to me to be a little bit juicier. And I like that. Um, there's plenty of bark. You know, you're not going to wrap till you set up the bark anyway. Mm. All right, guys. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this little comparison. It's not very scientific. And uh, honestly, it's got some of my own kind of little injections of, uh, of uh, techniques and stuff. No pun intended. So, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Comment down below how you do your pork butts. And, uh, and how you do barbecue sauce, if any. So, anyway, guys, thanks again. We'll see you again soon.